Most visitors to Darlington in northeast England see a pretty market town. But scratch the surface and there is another, more sinister side. Pockets of hardcore unemployment and chronic alcoholism, creating an underclass without hope or future. An environment where you might expect bad things to happen. But the story of David Harker and Julie Paterson shocked everyone in the town. David Harker was living on the edges of society, staggering from the off-license to the post office to cash his gyro, when one day he bumped into a woman upon whom he would play out a personal fantasy to be Britain's youngest serial killer. Harker was the nicest bloke I'd ever met at the time, the nicest person. And the first thing I noticed was his eyes, his big eyes, blue eyes. But he was always the centre of attention with his bottle of white stuff. <laughs> In February 1995, David Harker, a would-be musician, arrived in Darlington. He'd been in and out of trouble in his hometown of Chester Lee Street, and he hoped for a new start. It wasn't long before he'd made a large group of young friends. Matt Ferry was 16 when he fell in with 23-year-old David. He used to just come round and like have his dinner and stuff like that with us, and when he got on with my mum and my sister and things, so when he said he had nowhere to stay, we just let him stay for a bit and it just ended up paying longer than we expected. Janet Ferry was 11 when she got friendly with David. When David was living at mine he was wasn't paying any rent or anything but and my mum didn't mind because he was paying us really in his kindness like he was always doing his bit you know cleaning up tidying up helped me with my homework he was always trying to help me because he said he didn't want me to turn out like him. Things were really looking up for David Harker when he met and fell in love with a local girl. And they moved into a flat in Harewood Grove in one of Darlington's pretty residential areas. Harker hit it off immediately with his new neighbour, Stuart Bolton. When I first met Harker, he just came across as a nice person. You just a nice person. He, he was even intelligent, kind of, in a way. He was just polite, charming. You could have a conversation with him. After a year of domestic bliss, Harker's relationship fell apart and his girlfriend moved out. He turned to the drink then a lot more. He was always sat in the park. Wherever he was, he'd have his white star, he'd have his drink. And he, he made him feel better, so he said, but he, I think it made him worse. It was at this point that Harker met Julie Paterson, a woman who would change his life forever. 31-year-old Julie had a string of childhood tragedies and had recently lost her three children in a custody battle. This trauma had led her to a reliance on Valium and alcohol. I got to know Julie three years before the incident happened. Um, first as a lodger and then she became a friend. She was bubbly and she was happy. She liked to drink, but when she was depressed, you know, she went from an extrovert to an introvert. Within weeks of arriving in Darlington, Julie met Alan Taylor, with whom she was to have a three-year relationship. Alan was always a loner, always on his own. But he was a happy chap and he liked to drink and he used to do lots of work for me. And then Julie come along and I well, he really he loved her. He really, really loved her. They had their ups and downs and arguments, just like any other couple. But it was the first time he'd ever, like, been with anybody for a long time. And it was nice. We had our ways of, like, pulling out of difficult times and that's just making each other laugh. <laughs> we did. Good style. We haven't had the straightforward life. We've had some obstacles to jump over, you know. It was difficult for us both. I think she'd had a bad life. And that's why she uh, ended up in Darlington from Durham. From time to time, the Darlington Park drinking fraternity would up sticks to Hastings. Alan and Julie couldn't wait to move to the seaside, as it promised a new start. And then she fell pregnant. And she was pregnant with Alan's baby. But they took themselves off to Hastings. They were going to have a new life with a new baby, you know, and they were going to do everything differently. Um... And I don't know what happened there, but they put the baby up for adoption. I don't know if it was through choice or if it was social services choice, you know, for, for that to happen. 
and then they came back. I wish to God they'd never come back. Julie's circumstances were deteriorating. The adoption of her fourth child had left her depressed and withdrawn. She arrived one night. I can't remember when. It was just after they came back from Hastings, crying, because she missed her baby. And But she, she never, ever explained why it was up for adoption. And, of course, you don't like to ask, because it's, you know, it's prying into her personal life, really. And if she'd wanted me to know, she would have said. So... She was upset about it, but she thought it was for the best. But, of course, just because it's for the best doesn't make it any easier, does it? It was difficult for, for us both, actually. But I didn't show it as much as what Julie did. Julie just seemed lost. She gave up. She was upset. And when Julie got upset, she'd done silly things, you know. Um. She was depressed and she wasn't a very strong character and she would take pills if she was depressed. Throughout Julie's relationship with Alan, she regularly disappeared for days on end with no explanation. She'd go to Durham or she'd just disappear. We didn't know where she went, but she would just appear back again. Uh, dirty, hair not combed. And she'd just have a bath and a meal and a good sleep, and then she was back to normal the next day. There'd be many times she'll get up, she'll say, I'm just going to the toilet. And that would be Julie disappeared. It'd be for a day, maybe it's three days. The most was a week. Confused she was. She did make herself vulnerable because she would end up being with people who were also on the streets, and I mean, let's face it, today, who is on the streets, drug addicts and things. So Julie was vulnerable. And if somebody's offering you a pill when you're down and you're depressed and you're crying, you'll take it. Anything. Anything to boost your morale. April the 6th, it was a Monday, and there'd been a, a clip on the telly, and it was for Coronation Street, where a young girl had been taken by this, like, religious group. Obviously getting brainwashed and she lost her bairn. And when it came on the clip, Julie said, oh, she thinks she's the only one who's lost her bairn. And that's when she went up. Oh, the whole lot went. I remember Alan coming around on the 6th of April asking if Julie had been, had called or had seen her. And I said I hadn't. But if I did see her, I would get in touch with him. Uh, just on one of her walkabouts. And he, he came back the next day. And I still hadn't seen her. And he hadn't seen her. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I just... Like all the other times, just waited till she came back. And obviously, like, started looking when she hadn't come back. She had various appointments which she had to keep each way. One, being picking up a Valium, two, seeing her daughter, social security for her counter payments. I am there, turned up, no Julie. I really started to worry when Julie hadn't turned up for her eldest daughter's appointment, because Julie would not miss that. Although Alan couldn't find Julie anywhere, she was spotted in the pubs and parks of Darlington with a new man, David Harker. I think it was the, must have been about the beginning of April when I when I seen them together. My mum came in and said, "Oh, I think Harker's got a new girlfriend." I said, "Oh yeah." She looked like she said, "Quite small, blonde hair." They're in the. She said, "I've just seen them on Duke Street." I said, "All right," and then that was in. About tea time, about five o'clock, and then about seven o'clock, I went, was walking through here, and he was sat where I'm sat now, on this bench, and she was sat next to him, and that's when I met them. And they were, they were drunk, the pair of them, having a giggle. She was just as...